Hey everybody, it's Blue Toad, and welcome back to Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD. So, now that we have Din's Pearl, if we go to the menu, we can actually go over here, and we can actually see it on our subscreen, I guess. So yeah, cool. We have that now. We need to keep going to collect everything else we need to get. Uh, but also, I believe, if I'm not wrong, which I probably am, I feel like, if I aim this just right... I'm almost certain... Maybe. I feel a little bit more hopeful than I should be. But I feel like, that if I... Hit this... Please? <laughs> Please? Oh, I'm falling off. Okay, never mind. I thought I could actually hit that with the grappling hook to possibly activate it, except I th seem to be too far away. It almost looks like it can, though, is the most annoying thing. Oh my gosh, it looks like it's touching. Please, <laughs> please. I'm sad that this isn't working. Oh well, we'll have to figure out another way to activate that then. But for now, let's go find out what's happening in the Wind Shrine that was mentioned. I'm pretty sure it was called the Wind Shrine. Uh, but there's also, also a guy up here that we can talk to. That I want to see what is up, up, up. What's up, what's up, guy? Listen, man, you're not one of the native islanders, are you? Okay, cool. Thank you for telling me. Guess he's looking for the Rito. But anyway, back here, we actually have a few things that we can see. Uh, like Beetle's ship, but also, if we go up here, to the Wind Shrine, we have these two stones here. There appear to be markings that indicate specific directions. Well then, let's press up on the D-pad to bring out a Wind Waker. And let's try to copy them. And you learned the wind's requiem. Mm. Yep, that's a mighty, a, a mighty nice breeze. The name's Zephos. I am the god of winds. So, you're the new wind waker, are you? Great, great. For a beginner, you're... You've got a nice wind sense about you. I like you, kid. That tune you just picked up, well, it gives you control over the direction the wind blows. Depending on how it's used, wind can be a good thing or a very bad thing. You want an example of it being a bad thing? Then you should see my brother. It saddens me to say that my brother, Cy Cyclos, is miffed about his monument here being broken and now he spends his time creating cyclones to torment people with. So if you encounter any cyclones at sea, chastise, chastise my brother for me, will you? Will you? And that is my, my request for you. Okay, crazy wind god. So that just flies away laughing. You know, if there was ever something to do, flying away laughing on a cloud is probably the correct thing to do. But anyway, let's head back to our boat then. Hello. It would seem that Ganon sent those monsters to this place. But that would mean... There is no time to lose. We must depart at once for the place where the next pearl sleeps. We must sail to the south. We can also sail in any direction now thanks to us having... Can I please get in the boat? Thanks to us having... You gonna let me in? I should be able to get in. Hey. Unfortunately, we cannot depart until the wind blows to the south. Okay. It would be a fatal mistake to set sail under an unstable breeze. I have heard legends that tell of a wind god who once resided 
on this island. It is said that the winds obeyed his every whim. Have you heard nothing of him? Okay, so you're not going to let me in until I do this. Play that again. And now, we can pick a direction for the wind to blow. And we can also see what way it's currently blowing. So we need to go south. So let's do that. And now we should be able to get in, right? Yeah, there we go. Let's go to the south. I'm not sure where exactly we need to go. But also, I feel like I missed a thing here that I needed to do. No mind, it's right here. Hoi! Hold it right there, small fry. I don't know where you got your mitts on that C chart you got there, but it looks to me like it's a it's pretty much got nothing but C's drawn on it. It's pathetic. In fact, it's almost an insult to call that thing a C chart, if you ask me. What's the matter, small fry? I'm just trying to be nice here. I'm telling you that you've got a problem, and you do. Don't give me that stu stupefied look. It makes you look like you ought to be in diapers. Just listen, okay? I'm here to teach you what I know about this island. So open up your sea chart and make it s snappy. Okay. Just bring it up here and uh... He jumps into us, I guess. With a brush in his mouth. And he actually draws the island. Love Dragon Roost for us. There's a real peculiar cave toward the backside of this here Dragon Roost Island. Yeah, real peculiar, but I doubt you'll ever get there to see it, Small Fry, unless you manage to sprout wings and fly, that is. Because you won't be getting there otherwise. That's all I can teach you, Small Fry. But I'll do this for you, since I'm feeling generous. So generous. I'll send word to any of my brethren living near the islands of the Great Sea. Good bunch of fish. If you see a fish leaping out of the water, when you sail near an island, sail up to it and spread bait out on the water's surface. Trust me, this is good advice, Fry. See, the baiting process allows you to get a chart of the island, along with any info that might be of use to you. I highly recommend that you make a habit of doing this. Doing so. See, you're definitely going to need a reliable sea chart to help you search for things out at sea. I can't emphasize that enough, Fry. You need a well-drawn chart. If you don't get a chart for every island you come across, it'll be just be a bigger hassle for you later on. Now, don't say I never did anything for you, Fry. Oi, you there. You kingly red lion guy. That's it. I've repaid my debt. I'm done. You take care of the rest. Okay, well now we can actually head south because now we have Dragon Roost on our sea chart. So anytime we go near an island, we'll want to find a fish like him and trade bait for the sea chart uh, uh, of that island, I guess. So yeah, then we'll be doing that quite a lot as we go around the world. Oh my goodness, Volcano. It's probably fine, but there is a fish right next to it. And so we can put what we just learned into practice by stopping. And then, wait, where, where is my things? Uh, down, across. Go into the bait bag. You can also, on the gamepad in this version, uh, while you're not paused, just move items with your finger to what you want them to be. But I'm going to prefer using the paws. Anyway, there we go. Hoy, small fry. Yeah, yeah, I've heard. I can take... I take it you want a chart and information about this island. Then start by opening up your sea chart. You see that there volcano that's spewing out lava like there's no tomorrow? Yeah, well, they say there's a great treasure hidden inside that thing. 
The thing is, everyone who's ever tried to get inside has just been blasted away by the great balls of fire that come shooting out off the top. If you want to get inside, you ought to go find the island that's one square north and four squares west of here. That's where the power to freeze anything is hidden. Or so they say. Maybe it's not true, but I would it wouldn't hurt to look, Fry. And that's all the info I've got to offer. If you want to hear it again, you'll have to throw some more bait on the water for me. Sorry, but that's my policy, Fry. I can't go fighting evil on an empty stomach, you know. And with that, I'm off. So yeah, he will also give us information about the islands that we've already visited again, if we give them bait again, but we probably won't want to do that. Okay, I'm going to check this thing over here, this uh, lookout very quickly. I don't think there's actually any rewards maybe for us here at the moment. But also, stop, stop, okay, get out. Remember you can use uh, an item to actually stop instantly. The Wind Waker is actually pretty good for stopping quickly. You just have to cancel out of using it once you pull it out. But anyway, there's also cannons on this uh, lookout, so we need to be careful of those. Let's see if we can... Oh, there is a treasure for us here. But first, more importantly, let's grab that so we don't have to worry about knocking you off and not getting treasure from you. You only get one thing from them. If they do drop their special orb, I guess, it would just have other stuff inside of it, not the pendant. But anyway, we also got another yellow rupee, so we have quite a lot of rupees. How much rupees can I hold? I don't think it's going to tell me. That's okay, we can also now check the treasure charts that we've collected from the dungeon. Treasure chart 11 and 39, so this is obviously quite a few that we've already... Oh, that we already know about. But it means that we can see an X where we need to get the treasure next to the shape of the island. That we can get by, um, what's it called? That we can compare with the actual sea chart as long as we've actually unlocked the island's stuff by talking to the fish. So yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on that. But it will take some time before we are ready for that. Also, stay away from those seagulls over there. Because bad things will happen to you if you go over to those seagulls. Okay, back into the south. South is good. Also, I might go over this way. To see if I can get to that island over there. Also, if you see a glowing spot like this, just at sea. Um, well, if it's got a line above it, that means it's a special, a special one, which is actually because of the sea charts that we've been collecting. Or the treasure charts. Uh, but they disappear when you get close, and you need to just be right on top of it using the grappling hook on your boat to actually pull it out. But yeah, if you see a glowing spot like that, and it's got a line coming out of it, that's actually uh, one of the true charts reward. But anyway, most of the other glowing spots are just rupees. So if you want more rupees, that's a good way to do it, I guess. Wow, we can still hold more rupees over 300. This is crazy compared to other Zelda games where you can only hold up to like 100 at the very beginning of the game. It's incredible. It's too far, it's too soon for us to venture in this direction. We should sail directly to the next destination. Thanks game. Thanks. So apparently we can only go down south directly at the moment. Which is a little bit unfortunate, but I guess the game is really wanting us to progress and get the main stuff done before we can do other stuff. And it will give us more items to use to do other stuff as well, so. But it's just a little bit annoying to have to put stuff off for a little bit. It's also cool that you can see the shadows of islands in the distance. Oh hey, is that our destination? I don't think it is, but it might be. Way down there. Let me check the map, if I can figure out how to... There we go. I'm actually way off course. What is happening here? That should be a little bit better, maybe. It's actually in between those two islands. So it must be a fair way away. 
And I want to check some of the other islands that we're seeing here, but I don't think it's going to let me because we need to stay on course. Also, those tornadoes you need to stay away from, uh, they will just knock you around a bit. Uh, which is annoying because you'll get off course from where you're going. But they're not as bad as the bigger ones that we will find sometimes in the future. It's so weird not having music right now, but it's so... It's actually very... It's, it's, I love the sailing in this game, it's just... So nice. In a strange way. Oh, I see stuff over there, but I think I'm just going to stay on track since the game really wants me to stay on track. We can see our destination in front of us, those two big islands in the, in the, on the horizon. And now, actually, I want to go to my items, because you can actually use your telescope or your seat to actually look around. It's not incredibly useful, but it's, it's, it's nice for checking out island shapes and other stuff like that, like that look out there. We can tell it has cannons and enemies on it. I don't see any treasure on it, so I might just leave it. Unfortunately, whenever you're using your uh, telescope, it will stop you from moving because you don't have your sail out at the time. But still. I can see some other stuff over there that I want to take a look at at some point, but not right now, I don't think. Now, I think we want to go to the left one. I think. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's the left one we need to go to. Of these two islands. But I think when we get close enough, we'll get pulled in anyway. To where we need to go. The nice thing about the sailing in this game as well is just not having to worry once you're going in the right direction. You can just either, like, play with the rupees that you can collect along the way. Or just look around with the right stick. Yes, do you see what rises up from the horizon? That is where you must go, Link. The Forest Haven. It may appear as though this is but a great tree rising far above the ocean's surface. But it is a sacred place. It is inside that... This grotto that you will find, the spirit of the earth, the great Deku Tree. You must speak with the Deku Tree and receive from him the sacred gem known as Faroor's Pearl. I fear that Ganon's vile hand may have already reached this most sacred of sanctuaries. Go forth with caution, Link. Also beetles here if we wanted to buy some more bait so we can get some more uh, maps of the sea. So that's, that's why I was trying to buy some bait earlier, because we'll need it for um, the sea chart. Might as well put some more money into it, since we've got a lot of rupees at the moment. I mean, we'll need this money later on, but also right now, getting bait is going to be helpful. We can only hold up to eight items in our bait bag, though, so we're probably going to fill that up very soon. And then we can't buy anything else from Beetle. Already have 10 points saved up. Don't need any more than you already have. That means we've bait bags full. And we can go. And we're already a third of the way to getting our silver membership. Whatever that means. But anyway. We also have these post boxes that have been around. But we can't actually do, don't do anything at the moment. Good evening! Welcome to the Islands Postal Service. What do you have a delivery? What do you have for a del delivery? Nothing at the moment, so we're just gonna have to leave that then. And instead, we're gonna go up this path and fight some enemies. Because we have these Boko Babas, I think? I can't actually remember what they're called, and the game's not gonna give me an easy way to figure it out. But once we stab them a few times and cut their, their stem, they die. Leaving a stick behind, but also, occasionally they'll drop their special item, the Boko Baba Seed. I was right about it being called Boko Baba. You can keep it in your spoils bag. This is the source of the evil's 
evil plant's magic. Perhaps you can find someone who to cook it up. Its magic can be unleashed. Okay. But yeah, they also dropped a stick, which means we can actually attack them with each other, I guess. It's not the greatest weapon ever, but still. That explains where these sticks come from. Now, there's another one up here. You can tell because these flowers are just around. There we go. Now, do you drop anything? Just a ruby, okay. The only way to get across here is actually to use our grappling hook. It's a good thing we got that before coming here. Otherwise, we'd be in trouble. Also, I just saw that fish there, but I don't think it was going to let me get it before going across. We also have this Octorok here that's shooting stuff at us. What's down here? I think that's just if you fall off, possibly. That's interesting, though, that that exists. We have this Octorok shooting at us, though, so we need to bring out our shield to knock its thing back at it, which is a little bit... inconsistent, apparently. Also, I believe if we use our uh, grappling hook on the Bokobabas, I think they'll give us their seed. Let me try that, actually, over here. Being very careful not to fall off. Give me the thing. Thank you. Cool, so yeah, you can do that, if you want to get those quickly. And I mean, there's quite a few around here, so if you need to get them, just reload this area and get them, <laughs> basically. But anyway, there should be another Octorok here that we need to knock back its thing into with our shield. And then, we can just head across with the grappling hook. So there we go! Oh, don't fall off, don't fall off! No! The current! The current! Ah! Link, no! Oh, everything's gone wrong. Everything went wrong. I'm back at the start. Cool. Anyway, let's try this again. I was at the end, so why did it... Ah! Pain. Also, I want to line myself up properly so that... I can get across faster, because the grappling hook will keep the angle that you start off with and keep it uh, to when you land at your destination. Please work, please work, please work, please work, please work. Thank you. Please. Current, 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 current. Why is there a current there? Oh my goodness. It's right next to the edge as well, so. Just keep rolling, basically. But anyway, we're inside the forest haven now. So, let's go up the river a little bit more. And find out what's happening here. Find out what we can do. It's a big tree. Oh, but there's chews. And not just red chews, there's also green chews. And also the tree's alive. But anyway, let's roll into the tree to knock them all off. And now, we can actually get quite a fair bit of chew jelly here if we want to. We can also get the green chew jelly as well, since that's a different item that we can get from the green chews. But also the green chews also hide in, in the, their goo, I guess. Oh my goodness, where'd they go? They're just gone. Nope, they're back up there. Okay. I think I got too far away. But I was trying to get the true jelly without getting hit too much. So these ones, we can't hit them when they're hiding inside of their thing. But if we hit them with the the grappling hook, which means we get their ch green chew jelly, inside the green choo choos is a magical gelatinous essence. But it can't be used in its current form. But also, it stuns them for a second, so you can actually hit them. Unless you just wait for them to come out of their hiding spot to actually get them. But yeah, that's how they, they work, basically. They're a little bit annoying. But you want to stun them before hitting them, basically. There's one more. Come on. I think that's actually me taking too long, which is why it keeps they keep going back up there. Come on. Oh, you went in the ground, really? There we go.
I must apologize. I was in error. I saw your clothing and I suddenly felt... I felt a losing for an age gone by. A longing for an age gone by. That longing caused the ancient tongue to pass my lips. I am the guardian spirit of this forest, Haven. The Deku Tree. I owe you many... My thanks. For your aid in ridding me of those foul creatures. Tell me, was it not the King of Red Lions, the boat who speaks, who led you to this place? So it is true. Then you have come here because you have need of the Pearl of the Goddess. I see. I knew there was a reason the monsters had begun to congregate in the regions around my woods. Now I understand it. He has returned. Ganon has returned. In that case, we must make haste. Koroks, little children of the woods, this traveler is not your enemy. Let your hearts be at ease and show yourselves. What do you call yourself, Link? Well then, Link, these are the Koroks, the spirits of the forest. Once upon a time, long ago, the Koroks took on human forms, but then when they came to live on the sea, they took these shapes. Now they fear people, but to me, they will ever be my cherished little children. As it happens, you have come just in time for a ceremony that the Koroks hold but once every year. It is about to begin. I shall grant the pearl to you once their ceremony is complete. I must apologize for the brief delay, but if the ceremony is not completed soon, an ill fate could befall us. So let it begin. Are you ready, my children? We are not, a oh great Deku Tree. Something terrible has happened. It is Makar, Makar! What is the matter, Linda? You and Makar are always late. No, no, no! It's not that! Oh, great Deku Tree! Makar fell into the Forbidden Woods! What? The Forbidden Woods? I told him to be careful, but still Makar flew above the Forbidden Woods as he drew close to it. Foolish little Makar. Link, have you heard all this? The Forbidden Woods are right beside the hallowed island of our forest haven. Those woods, for the whole region, is a vile place that is home to evil beasts. And now it seems they may, they have taken my taken a child of the forest named Makar. Your presence here is no mistake, I deem. The King of Red Lions likely expects great deeds of you. It is why he brought you here. I am sorry to ask this of you. But can you go rescue young Makar for me? But great Deku Tree, people cannot fly through the air. Ah yes, thank you child, you are right. It is not possible to enter those woods from the sea, It is, is it? Link, I would guess from your size that you are heavier than my Korok children. Yet I think we may still be able to solve this dilemma. You must use an item, the item I shall bestow upon you and fly through the sky. Poomph. Forgive me, Link, but I- but could you climb up to my crown and get the leaf from up there? If you say so. So... The Forbidden Woods were once our home. Uh, they were peaceful back then. I would guess that our home should still exist somewhere deep within the woods. If you have any- if you have trouble of anywhere in the forest, just look for the stump-shaped houses. What? What do you mean? Do you know about this flower? It's called a bubba bud. You can stand in front of it and tilt the left stick up to jump into it. 
bubble buds have this peculiar habit of shooting you up into the air after you jump into them, so you can use them to jump up to hard, hard reach, hard to reach places. So yeah, we can hop into this bud here and then aim where we want to go and hold forward to be spat out into it. Also, you have to turn using the left stick, which is a little bit weird after having used the right stick to turn every other time. Wow, you're quite good at that, Mr. Knight. Just keep doing that until you get all the way to the top. If you shoot out facing the wrong direction, don't panic. If you don't tilt left in any direction, you'll land safely back in the bubble bud. So if we make uh, it was slightly off centered with uh, everything, I guess, when we get spat out, we can just not touch the left stick to fall back into the bud, and then we can realign ourselves. It's quite nice. Also, this is the first time in a Zelda game that uh, Koroks were introduced. <laughs> Just like a lot of other things, apparently. But anyway, we've made it up to this branch up here, where the leaf is. You got the Deku Leaf! Set it to use it with whatever you set it to. Plant your feet on the ground and use it to blow blasts of air at objects and enemies. You can also jump in the air and use your magic power to drift on the currents of the wind. Swordsman, over here. Please, you must fly from over there to here using your Deku Leaf. If you say so, well, let's get that out then. Probably just put that to X. And I guess we can just jump over here and float. We also have a magic meter underneath our hearts now, which will deplete slowly as we're holding, uh, using our Deku Leaf. But now, we can get magic in these bottles, or smaller ones, to recover our magic. There's a smaller one. So yeah, the bigger ones obviously will give you more magic, the smaller ones will give you a little bit of magic. So yeah. Very good, Mr. Swordsman, you've already mastered that using the Deku Leaf. But since you're so much heavier than we are, you can't fly very far, can you? How unfortunate. Well, anyway, this is the exit that leads to the Forbidden Woods, where our brother Makar is being held. Please take care of Makar. So, yep. That's how it works. We also have to make sure we have the wind helping us, because otherwise we will be going against it, and it will actually be very slow and not go anywhere with it, so... Whenever you're using the leaf, there's also a marker on the ground showing you where you're going to land when you let go. Or when you just land on the ground, you know. Congratulations, swordman. swordsman. It appears you've finally gotten the Deku Leaf. That eerie looking island over there is home to the Forbidden Woods. Makara is trapped somewhere within there. You'll have to float over to the entrance from here using your Deku Leaf. But when you're flying with the Deku Leaf, you're at the mercy of the wind, as I said. If you if the wind can't carry you out, out carry you there, you'll fall into the sea below before you land. If only the wind were blowing in the right direction to carry you there. So yes, it's not actually going directly to the Forbidden Woods, but also we don't want that at the moment. Instead, I want to align my link with the island over there. And let's change the wind. Using Link as a marker of which direction we want it to be at. Down to the southwest. And we're going to use that little island there as a, a midpoint, I guess. I guess. Of sorts. Oh my goodness, the magic is going down really quickly. Luckily though, this island is just filled to the brim with magic. So we can just refill that nice and quickly. quickly. Nice job, Swordsman. It looks like you're, you've are you already mastered using your Deku Leaf. You're a quick study. The first thing you should do is cut the grass around here to replenish your magic power. The entrance to the Forbidden Woods is uh, on a much higher level than the entrance to our Forest Haven. In order to get up to such a high place, you'll have to catch the swirling updraft. You can see... Can you see the updraft, Swordsman? The updrafts around here move swiftly. You have time... You have to time your jump just right so the wind will fill your Deku Leaf and carry you into the updraft, giving you the lift you need. Once you're floating on high, just let the wind take you to the entrance of the woods. So yes, we can use this uh, updraft tornado thing 
that's going around the island so that we can actually get up higher enough to get to the entrance. It's a little bit out from the island, so you need to be ready for it. Oh, please, 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 please catch me, 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 please catch me. Okay, good. There's also some pea hats floating around the entrance. I forgot to change the card, the wind direction. I have to go down. I messed up because I didn't change the wind direction. That's why I was having so much trouble. It all makes sense now when I stop and think about it. Okay, let's try this again. This time actually changing the wind direction. To northwest. I should have should have realized that that wasn't the right way. But yeah, there are some pea hats floating around the entrance over there. They will fly towards you and hit you. If they hit you, you'll get knocked out of your leaf. So you have to be very careful about that. Okay, wind. Please pick me up. Thank you. Let's head over here to the entrance. Being careful not to get hit by these things. The pea hats. The pea hats also have golden feathers if you use... Your gra grappling hook on them, so I guess I could do that as well if I wanted to get gold and feathers. Just gonna take one. We can't actually attack them either, so we have to just leave them like that. But there we go. We've made it into the Forbidden Woods, which is our second dungeon. So that is it for now. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.